This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Hey guys, so I'm on the road this week taking some time away from the city and I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to show you guys how to make my favorite lazy day breakfast dish of all time. Light, paper thin and deliciously versatile Russian style pancakes also known as blini or blinchiki. They're also really really simple to make. I learned the basics from my grandma. However, there is one little catch. Let's make the batter first and then I'll explain. Modern day Russian pancakes or blinchiki are pretty similar to French crepes in many regards. It's all about making a nice and homogenous batter based on eggs and all purpose flour. You can optionally add some vegetable oil, which will help with tenderness and smoothness. Season everything with salt and a bit of sugar, you know, to keep it neutral enough for all applications. Now we're gonna need a liquid component to get the batter nice and thin. For this, some people will use plain water, which gives you a lighter crepe with crispy edges, but others might use milk, which gives you a richer and softer blin. I actually like to do two thirds water to one third milk, which is my personal sweet spot. It's absolutely crucial not to just dump everything into a bowl and start mixing. This would result in a batter full of unnecessary little lumps. Instead, here's my signature method. With a whisk, combine everything but the liquid component into a smooth paste first. Now is when you're ready to start adding the liquid. And you wanna do that in batches. I like to go one third at a time, mixing everything in before doing the next third. Your batter is going to look ridiculously runny, almost like water, and that's actually okay. It's the secret to getting a paper thin pancake. But I'd actually recommend resting your batter in the fridge for about half an hour or up to overnight. This is a French trick to develop a bit more flavor, but I also find that the batter will thicken slightly and your pancakes won't tear as easily. But now let's actually make our blins. The only tool you really need is a decent nonstick pan. I got this fancy crepe pan with low sides, which actually was a pretty bad idea and I'll explain why in a second. Just use any nonstick pan you have around and make sure it's not too small. I like anything between 20 and 30 centimeters in diameter, which is roughly 9.8 liquid inches for my American viewers. Preheat your pan on medium heat and get out the secret weapon of any crepe master, clarified butter or ghee. Why? Well, because it's pretty much 100% butter fat, which gives you most of the buttery flavor, but you don't have to deal with bitter, burnt butter smoking up your kitchen. Spread about a teaspoon of that on your pan and you're good to go. So in Russia, there's a bit of a saying that your first blin is always gonna come out bad, which is, Often true, though I never really understood why until today. And that brings me to the only tricky part of blin making. At home, I can proudly say even my first pancake usually comes out perfect, but in this rental vacation home, all of a sudden I ran into the infamous first blin conundrum. I slowly got the hang of it by the time I got to number three or four, though I still struggled a bit. And you know why? Because I wasn't familiar with my gear. I used a new pan, I cooked outdoors on gas, rather than my electric stove at home. And to a blin master like me, this was unacceptable. So the next morning I made another batch with the exact same batter, but I made it indoors and I got a slightly larger ladle. And guess what? It worked 1000 times better. So this is how it's supposed to work. On medium heat, melt a teaspoon of clarified butter on your pan, get a ladle full of batter, pour it in the center of your pan and then right away swirl it around the pan as evenly as you can. If you get a few naked spots, no worries. Just use the dripping batter from the ladle or get a bit of extra batter in there. It's gonna be fine. After about a minute or two, you'll first notice little drops of oil collecting on the surface of your pancake and eventually the sides will begin to turn crispy brown. You can carefully check if the bottom of your crepe is indeed nice and golden and if it is, shimmy your spatula underneath and past the center point of the blin and in one self-confident motion, flip that blinchik. This might look a little bit intimidating, but I promise you'll get the hang of it. Just like you will get the hang of everything else here, which is the true, not so secret secret. You just gotta get familiar with your gear. You gotta know the details. How evenly does your pan heat up? What's the perfect size ladle for your pan? What's the personality type of your stove? Etc. Etc. I can give you a recipe for a good batter, but no recipe in the world will know exactly what tools you're using. You should eventually be rewarded with a nice stack 
snack of about six to 10 thin blins. But now you gotta decide how to eat them. A pretty classic way to serve them would be to fold them twice, then garnish with some fresh berries or jam. The mint is just here for the clicks, but the big fat dollop of sour cream is not. This is absolutely essential for a true Russian blinchik meal. You could certainly eat them like that, but trust me, you are missing out if you're not making stuffed blinchiki, which are my absolute favorite, and I'll show you how to make them after a quick word from this video's sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN service, which means it keeps you and your data safe by encrypting everything you send through the internet. Especially now that I'm on the road logging onto who knows what Wi-Fi networks, I always make sure to have it on. But that's not it. A few weeks back, I was traveling across the border in Poland and the Netflix show I'm currently watching is not actually available there. Fortunately, with Surfshark, that's not a problem. Literally, all I gotta do is select one of their international servers and they have them all around the world, hit refresh and boom, you're good to stream geo-restricted content. A VPN truly is a great tool to have on hand, but don't take my word for it, try it. Right now, Surfshark has a great deal going on. By using my link in the video description and promo code Andong, you're gonna get 83% off. On top of that, you're getting three whole months for free, and guess what? There's even a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you try it and you don't like it, simply cancel your subscription and you're gonna get your money back in no time. Thank you, Surfshark, for sponsoring this video. So back to our Russian pancakes, which after your epic breakfast have now been sitting in the fridge for about a day. They reheat extremely well, so there are a million great things to do with them, my favorite being stuffed blinchiki. Let's make a savory filling first. For that, I'm melting a good knob of butter in my frying pan, into which I'm also adding half a large onion, finely diced to sweat until translucent. My next addition will be some diced bacon or ham, completely up to you, and also a generous handful of diced button mushrooms. Something like porcini or chanterelle would be a more traditional Russian choice, but this works just fine for me. While those are hanging out, let me introduce you to my plate of herbs. For now, I'm only gonna grab a few fresh sprigs of thyme and mix them in with the other ingredients, only to get them right back out after a few minutes. Those are actually just the flavorful accents for our savory filling. The main body, the vehicle for flavor, is going to be this batch of plain mashed potatoes. Not gonna lie, I used store-bought instant mashed potatoes, which is actually great, because I was able to add about 20% less water to them, which made for a slightly firmer result. Now simply add in those delicious fried ingredients and this is when we can get back to our plate of herbs. We got some finely minced chives and some dill. To me, dill is the crucial ingredient here. Everything just tastes like straight out of Babushka's kitchen when you add dill. True story. Season with salt and pepper and that, my friends, is a ridiculously flavorsome savory blean filling. We're gonna fold this into our bleans, but first let's work on our much simpler sweet filling. For all of you with a sweet tooth out there. Not me, by the way, I like them salty. So the base for this one will be, well, cheese, but I'm talking plain tangy cottage cheese. This is something very commonly found in Central and Eastern Europe. It's kind of like ricotta, but much more tangy and very much unlike ricotta, it's really low in fat. It also firms up really nicely in the fridge, so depending on where you live, I'm sure you can think of some good substitute. We're simply gonna season this with a bit of sugar, a few pinches of salt, about one bean's worth of freshly ground vanilla. Actually, I don't know why I'm being so extra. Just use extract if you want. And then there is only one thing left to add, which is definitely not raisins. They would be traditional, but I hate raisins. So instead, I'm using some dried cranberries that I soaked in water for about an hour. So much better. Give everything a good mix and you're gonna get a wonderful creamy cream that's mildly sweet and full of delicious vanilla flavor. When it comes to wrapping the beans, it's really not rocket science. In fact, this is one of the simplest stuffed foods I have ever come across because the beans are so forgivingly soft and pliable. Just add about one to two heaping tablespoons in the center of your pancake and then fold them like a rectangular burrito. Bottom first, then the sides, and then finally the top. 
you get a super convenient and perfectly stable stuffed bean pocket that's ready to be topped with extra sour cream and berries or jam. This really doesn't need anything else. Now for the savory ones, I also love sprinkling them with some grated cheese for extra goodness before folding. You can keep them in the fridge or even the freezer and whenever you want a delicious meal, you just toast them up on a hot pan from both sides with some extra clarified butter, ideally with the lid on actually, go low and slow so they're evenly warmed through and then go ahead and top them with what else? Sour cream. And if like me you're in vacation mood, a tablespoon of caviar. Why not? Finally garnish with some dill as a little nod to the babushkas of the world. 